Honey, it's Friday, May 26th, early in the morning here on the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, getting ready for Memorial Day weekend. I hope you all are too and have plenty of uh, family activities planned. And we'll all take a moment to remember the people who paid the ultimate price for us to have the freedoms we have. For me, uh, this weekend is like my birthday, Christmas, everything that's good is, is wrapped up in this weekend. And it's principally because, you know, I really love racing and this weekend is the uh, Indianapolis 500. And I have a, a personal uh, connection with that. I've known Rick Mears, Rick and Roger Mears, and the Mears family uh, my entire life. My dad raced against his dad in the early 50s in Wichita, Kansas. And it's kind of funny to hear both of them talk. Both of them won every time. But anyway, so I've, I've been around that family all my life. And Rick Mears, if you don't know, is a four-time Indianapolis 500 champion, as well as sitting on the pole six times and an IndyCar champion, and has been very, very successful in the IndyCars still works for uh, Roger Penske, the man who now owns the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but has always had an IndyCar team. And it's kind of, I'd like to tell you a story about how Rick got started. Uh, Rick and his brother Roger raced the Baja 1000 several times, and I think won it, uh, prior to uh, Rick ever getting a chance to drive an IndyCar. Anyway, when he was, when those, those guys were racing uh, the Baja 1000, they got to know Parnelli Jones. And what happened was, is a guy named Teddy Yip owned an Indy car and fired his driver, I believe it was in 1978, and was looking for another driver and called Parnelli Jones and asked him who he would uh, hire to drive that car. And Parnelli told him, why don't you give this Rick Mears kid a chance? And Rick had never, you know, sat in an Indy car or anything of that nature. But anyway, Teddy Yip called Nick, or Rick, and uh, asked him to drive the car. Well, at the time, he was running a backhoe in Ventura, California for my Uncle Larry. And my Uncle Larry, of course, he was a racer too. Uh, his son raced uh, sprint cars and actually the Indy Junior Series for a while. And Rick told him that he had a chance to go race in Trenton in an Indy car and asked if he could have the weekend off. And my Uncle Larry said, you know, of course you can. And the next thing he asked was, can you uh, front me the money for the airplane tickets to get back there? And so my uncle did that and sort of the rest is history. He went back and drove that car, uh, made a really good impression. And then Roger Penske hired him to drive one of his cars. And I think it was in his second year at the Indianapolis 500, he won four of, or won his first of four Indianapolis 500s. So, I've always, uh, you know, I've always loved the 500. I, as a little boy, I listened to it on the radio well before it was uh, was ever televised. But it was sort of funny when Rick won the, his first 500. It, I don't think it was televised at that time, or if it wasn't, uh, I was, I wasn't uh, in front of the TV. I was in San Luis Obispo with a friend of mine, Jim Gerhardt, who's was working for me at the time and both of our wives were pregnant with our first kids and we were having a little picnic and listening to the 500 on the radio and you know the last 10 15 minutes uh, 10 last 10 or 15 laps it became apparent that Rick had a shot to to win and and Jim Gerhardt of course knew Rick well as as well as I did and anyway we were making laps around the uh, the picnic table until he finally got the checker <laughs> walking around there. It was a really exciting moment I'll never forget. Uh, another short story about Rick, I could have, I could talk for hours, but uh, when Jill Villeneuve was killed in a Formula One car, the, the Canadian driver, uh, Enzo Ferrari called Rick and wanted him to drive a Ferrari in Formula One. And Rick ultimately decided to stay with the Indy cars, but I often wonder what would have happened uh, had he chosen to drive in Formula One, uh, you know, that would have been something that very few people, very few Americans have ever done. And the only one to 
win the Indianapolis 500 and to also be a Formula One champion was Mario Andretti, who was Rick's teammate at Penske at one time. So anyway, I, I always feel like talking about the Indy 500 this weekend, so I did it again. As I said earlier, I hope, uh, I hope everybody's going to have a good weekend and take some deserved time off and again, uh, pay respect to our military. Aloha from the Big Island and I'll talk to you soon.